Welcome back to We've Tried It. I'm Missy. I'm Shirley. Well, we have Chef Royal with us again tonight and DJ Fat. And we're going to be eating some more good food. This time we're not going on the exotic line. No. So what are you going to make for us? We're going to do some wonderful Copper River Salmon. Uh, this is wild uh, Copper River Salmon. And then we're also going to be doing a wonderful pan-seared uh, ribeye. Uh, we've done a couple things to the Copper River Salmon to prep it. Uh, is we've removed the pin bones which kind of run right up here. You can take your finger a lot of times and you'll be able to feel it. Even if you buy salmon pin bone out at the store, I would recommend that you make sure that you run your finger over it to make sure all the pin bones have been removed. Uh, they say they do it not every time you're able to get every one. Just take a needle nose pliers that you only use for food and be able to pull those out. Otherwise, you can get a fish uh, pinchers at a lot of different stores. Then we skinned it, and then what we also did is remove kind of the gray bloodline out of the back uh, of the salmon, which kind of keeps it from being so fishy. A lot of people like to uh, grill their salmon uh, on the skin and I find that to be a little bit fishy. Although it's really easy to grill that way because you don't have to flip it. All you gotta do is put your lid down on your grill. This way you might have to flip it. But I might like it. You might like I'm it. Because I'm not a salmon fan. Yeah, I love it this way. Especially wild salmon versus farm-raised salmon. Did you know you're supposed to do all this stuff to salmon? Absolutely not. Me either. I mean, I, think I would it. never take out any of that. Nope, I've been cooking right. it on the skin forever. Right, and then it becomes, it's a little bit strong. And yeah. It's got a little bit more fishy flavor to it. And that's usually a lot from the fats. And we're going to do that on two different ways tonight. We're going to do one on a uh, Himalayan block salt, mm -hmm. or salt block. Big key on that is make sure that you heat that salt block up in the oven with the oven. And then when you cool it down, do it the same way. When you shut the oven off, let it cool all the way down uh, or prevent it from cracking. Oh. Uh, and we do a lot of different things on there, from appetizers to uh, Philly cheesesteaks to uh, searing little medallions and stuff like that right on the block. And then we thought we would just do one on a regular sheet pan with just a little bit of sea salt on it so you can taste the difference in the flavor between the block and the non-block. Okay. And then we're also going to do a uh, cast iron seared ribeye. Uh, and the reason why I like doing it in a cast iron pan is to be able to get all this kind of marbly fat nice and caramelized and crispy on the outside. Because the only person that liked uh, soggy fat was Jack Spratt's wife. Right? I wish I could have that. Because yeah. uh -huh. she would not eat any meat. What is it? I don't have right? any idea. Yeah, yeah, it's a nursery rhyme. Uh, 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 oh, so, yeah. that's why. <laughs> so here's what we're going to do. Uh, to be able to do this, we've got the wonderful uh, ribeye. Big key is when we're cooking any meat, to be able to pull it out of the refrigerator a couple 45 minutes to an hour before you're going to cook it, try to bring it to room temperature. That way it cooks evenly, it gets a nice sear on it. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take salt and pepper, what I call my secret ingredient. We're going to go from wow. up high on it so that way we get a nice cascade, a nice even cascade. That's a lot, huh? Well, you know, uh, salt and pepper make really good flavor on so many meats. But yeah, a lot of people are like, oh boy, you put a lot of salt on there, but it really brings out the flavor. And we want to be able to equally coat it. We're just going to take a little touch of grapeseed oil, not a lot, just a little tiny bit of grapeseed oil. Now, why grapeseed oil? It's got a higher flash point than olive oil or canola oil. The olive oil will burn right away. So, our pan is probably medium high right now, and we'll be able to get a really <laughs> nice sear. So, so, you just oiled the steak now? Just a little bit of the steak, yeah. Not the pan. Yeah. And hear that it's seared right away, right? You can hear it searing. So that's that little tiny bit of uh, grapeseed oil on the outside before the fat and stuff like that from the actual meat starts to come out. So anytime you're doing chicken, anytime you're doing pork, anytime you're doing any meat, little tiny bit of oil or roaster or grilled vegetables, and then you'll get an instant sear on it if your pan is hot. I can't even believe it. I mean, right? I've been cooking wrong forever. Well, like 50 years. You know, but sometimes, you know, a lot of us, you know, if you, if you had uh, some, who you learned from wasn't the best cook, that's who you learned it from. <laughs> right? Or, you know, so we're going to do kind of a little bit of the same thing when we do our salmon. So we're going to do a little bit of salt. Not a lot. Well, I obviously don't use enough salt. And then, because that will really bring out the flavor of everything. Right? So this one we're going to do on our regular sheet pan. Right, one fillet, and we're gonna do a little bit of oil on it, and the other one we're gonna do on the salt block. And I'm gonna put it actually on the spatula because we have a salt block in the oven, and it'll be easier for me to place it in there. So we preheated this Himalayan salt block 
I've got about 425 in here. We're going to lay it right on top. And again, hear the sear. Mm -hmm. That's what we want. We're going to close that up. We're going to be able to get that uh, nice and roasted. The salt from the uh, salt block is going to permeate the, the fish a little tiny bit. And it's really going to bring in a lot of different flavor. How long does that, how long would you think that takes? Five to seven minutes. That's it? Yeah. All right, so the other one, we're going to put in the oven. We're going to drizzle it just a little tiny bit of oil, not a lot. And once again, you're using canola? I got, uh, you could use canola oil or you could use grapeseed oil for okay. this. Uh, at this temperature, you're not worried about it burning or anything like that. You could do olive oil on this. There's okay. nothing wrong with that. Okay. All right, so I'm going to put each one of these in a 425 oven. And we're going to roast them. We'll be able to taste the difference. All right, so our ribeye's kind of searing really nice, which we're starting to get some really nice brown, crispy bits on it, which is really nice to be able to do. And then, so here we've got the two different salmons. So this is the one with the Himalayan block for you guys. Uh, so let's just take this, and sometimes the easy way to cut it is just kind of go right down this line, and we'll grab here. And we'll be able to do so a wonderful uh, the Himalayan blocked uh, salmon, and this is with. Uh, and then we've got some of those wonderful sauces in front of you. We've got a, a pesto, a sweet basil pesto. I've got kind of a uh, spicy aioli. This is the ahi sauce, which is uh, a Latin sauce of green onion, cilantro, lime juice, and then we've got a little tomato jam over there. Tomato jam which are all real nice. Again, try it without the, uh, try it without a sauce, and then try it with the sauce. Try yeah. What's the spice in the spicy? Sriracha. Is it sriracha? I'll tell you about a sriracha, yeah. I love sriracha. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that nice? Yeah. It's one of those condiments I think that, that uh, everybody should have in their house. Mm -hmm. Definitely. All right, so and then I'm gonna just slide this one in for you guys. It's gonna be on the left, and this is the one without the block. Do you want any pesto? I'm going to try this, these two. Okay. There you go. That one will be on the left for you guys. Okay, that's the right one. Oh, wait, this is on. the one in the, uh, just on the okay. sheet pan. So the left is the sheet pan, yep. right is the salt block. Yep. Okay. Okay, let's try sheet pan first. Yeah. Oh, okay.
Hey, I really am disappointed that you don't like this. Well, I'm not. I I knew I'm not a salmon person, and I know this is a really good salmon, so it would. It just really be a is for me to eat it because I don't like it. I like steak. Well, you're gonna be happy then in a minute. Yep. All right. We're gonna continue eating one. Okay. So now. I let that, that steak rest for about five minutes. You notice I sliced it all here. And you see how it's not bled out all over the plate? Right. So that moisture and that juiciness of that steak is still intact in that steak. So you guys ready to have some I'm wonderful? I'm smiling because I'm loving every yeah, bit of this. That wonderful yeah. cast iron seared ribeye. Oh my god. Look at the caramelization that we got on it. We got a really nice color to it. Nice mid rear. If you like mid rear, well, yeah. uh, down at the other end, we've got a little tiny bit of that. Uh, more well done. Okay. Beautiful mid rear. Oh uh, my rear gosh! Line. Right. Yeah. And the big thing there is, if you have, if you're not really uh, sure on temperatures, that instant read thermometer serrated. works so well. Okay. Now, Royal, you had told us something interesting about knives. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, interesting thing. I mean, you guys both have one. So, uh, most steak restaurants serve uh, steak or poultry or uh, pork with a serrated knife because, one, they're cheap, inexpensive. But if you ser if you cut through it, and surely you notice how you had to saw oh, through yeah. with that serrated knife? Yeah. And look at your plate. It's got a little bit of juice mm -hmm. left on it. So, if we use a non-serrated knife, and good steak knives will be non-serrated, you'll be able to cut right through that cell structure, and it won't actually be... Uh, it won't uh, remove any of that juice, and that juice will stay right in your steak. Oh. I cannot, I can't tell you the last time I had this type of steak. Yeah. This so, like a ribeye like this, what, in your opinion, is a good wine to pair with it? I would say uh, a cab would be really well, or a Pinot Noir. Okay. Uh, and do we have any of that? Oh, we might just for you. Oh, we've got a wonderful word on Pinot with that. Yes. Yeah, oh yeah. Why don't you? Have, what bottle is it? It is A to Z. You know, it's going to be nice. It should have a little cherry and a little coffee you. nose to it. I think. This is so it is. good. It is so juicy on the inside oh, yeah. and it's right? seared. Yeah. It's good? Yeah. Well, and I think that yeah, cast iron pan, when it's hot, mm -hmm. gets that nice crust and that nice sear on it on all sides. This I think steak you guys does will enjoy not it. need any no, it does sauces yeah. at all. Right? It's so good. And right. I'm good. a heavy salt user, so normally I would have salted this three times. Yep. And I don't need to. Well, and if you wanted to, this is where it's a nice spot. Uh, we always have a, a salt grinder at our table uh -huh. of really good sea salt. And so if somebody wants it a little saltier, and that's right where you finish with that good sea salt, or finish with good olive oil just to pour over the top. Yeah. So we got a surf and turf. You, know. you kind of do? Yeah. And yeah. I'll just stick with the turf. Okay. Fine. <laughs> now, could you, the ribeye, could you put, could you cook this on the Himalayan? Uh, if you do it really, really thin. Uh, so we do steak sandwiches a lot at our house on that uh, Himalayan salt block, and I'll shave that ribeye super paper thin uh, and make a sandwich out of it. It doesn't get as nice of sear on top of that. If you wanted to do uh, the finish, a ribeye on it, I think once you get it seared, you could put it in the, on that block. But if it were to hold that buttery flavor like it does the salmon, it would be... Perfect. Uh, you know what? Something I really have to try it once or twice, and I have it down, kind of thing. I believe you can. I don't have it 100. Let's get on that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you should. Yeah. That'll be yeah, that's next one. Yeah. Let's <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, I I can't yeah, say I just to... need to keep eating. Yeah. So you can close it out. All right. Well, <laughs> thank you so much. I mean, do you think that you'll be able to make it taste like this? You go home? I don't know. I'm going to try it. I am too. Okay, well, let me know how yours goes. But yeah. we really appreciate you showing us how to do this. Well, thank you very much for having yeah. us. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.